um, members that are present is Councilor Eugene Tacey to my left from Ward 7. I'm City Councilor Mary Ann Labars, the Chair of the Committee on Social Services and Veterans Affairs. And Councilor Bill Dwight, we tried to call him a couple of times, so we have him for absent. I'd like to make an announcement of audio video recording of this meeting. And I also would like to announce that this meeting is one hour in length due to a previous book, room booking for the Committee on Ordinance. Um, I would like to introduce Meredith O'Leary, who is the RS Director of Public Health, the City of North Anton. And Meredith will speak on the following, the Board of Health, the core functions, and essential services. And um, she has a couple, another big issue that she would like to talk about. Go ahead, Meredith. Thank you, counselors, for having me here today. Um, I don't know if you've been able to watch this over the past couple of minutes, but what it is, it's just a loop of pictures that I've taken and uh, put on a presentation for you that just kind of gives you an overall of what it is that the health department does. Um, but I'll have handouts with these slides too. It's about four minutes long and I don't want to take up any more time because we're limited on this. So I'll go right into the presentation. that picture at? What's that? The what? flooding. The last picture you were on. Yeah, it said under five. Yeah, under five. Hmm. Over by Allen Road. Last page. Yeah. Ooh, all the I, well, I can go through them faster than the loop if you want. Well, that's lovely. <laughs> that's hoarding. See that quite often nowadays. Where was that actually? In our city? That picture, no, was not taken from our city. Oh. Some of these are, some of them aren't. Oh, okay. This is a risk assessment map from last year, 2012, showing where Northampton was in terms of um, arbovirus, which is mosquito borne disease. That's just talking about our community sharks program that we have in the health department. Yeah. This is a mobile unit that we have accessible to us through the um, coalition, the Emergency Preparedness Coalition. Regular food service inspection, taking temperatures, childhood obesity is something. Yeah. Diabetes. Oh, look at that one on the right. Yeah. That's right up my alley. Yes, yeah, sir. I'm just going to say that. Man versus food. This is our EOC. This is in Sandy of last year, our emergency operations center. That's Josh Yenley. It's at the fire department. Halloween storm. Another typical boarding case that we see. What's that on her? Why do they have these masks? Because there's a lot of hazards in there that you don't want to be inhaling. And so, is that an owner that's in there that just had regular street clothes on? That was the property owner, yes. And that was the cleanup crew behind her. Wow. That's something that we do a lot of determination on when we see flaking, peeling paint. If the home is, was built prior to 1978 and they have six-year-olds living there. That's our public health nurse. That's a flu clinic that we did down at the senior center. And those are GCC nursing students. That's not our um, our closure in Northampton. That was in New York, but that's something that you would face if you had to close down a restaurant. We deal with rabies in our office. What was, what's mental health hygiene? Mental health hygiene, all the social services. Is okay. that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just never heard it called that before. Yeah, me neither. No, it's the same thing. Hmm. We have to inspect tanning salons twice a year. That's a shelter. Now, what's wrong with a tanning salon? 
there's regulations this, under the state sanitary code that they have to abide by, and so our mandate is to inspect them twice a year, like you do with restaurants. You mean like cleaning the inside and whatever? Posting, yeah, all sorts of things. Mm. What kind of bowls they can use. This is uh, Smith Boat was the regional shelter from Sandy. New strains of the bird flu. We're now dealing with a new one. It's H7 and H9. N7, that's the one that's been in the news that you've seen the past yep. couple days. Going from bird to humans, but not humans to humans yet. The animal the hoarding. Animal hoarding. <laughs> Is that that situation in our city with all those cats? Not feral cats, that's a different situation. This is someone who has the animals inside their home. Oh, Jesus. Well, what is that? Infected tongue, tongue piercing? You know, you know, <laughs> oh, <laughs> just never mind. You know, oh. Body art. So, again, these are all the things that the health department does. Now, I want to get to the PowerPoint presentation so we can move ahead. Now, what would the Board of Health have to do, Meredith, with this nasty picture you just showed us of tongue piercing? Tongue piercing clinics. But what I'm saying is, how can you determine if that infected tongue was caused by where they had it pierced? Or if they just didn't take care of it? Is that right. what you're saying? Right. Right. Well, I mean, the establishment has to meet uh, a certain set of sanitation codes. And if they're abiding by that, and they have to hand out aftercare instructions, there's a certain set of policies and procedures that have to be met. And if they're following that, then they're in the right. However, if the, you know, the customer is not following the procedures that were handed to them, then what are you to do? We're only allowed to regulate the facility and what they're doing inside. We can't obviously regulate what the, the customers are doing. So why are, doing. are you showing an infected tongue? Because a lot of times, these body art establishments are not following the proper sanitation. And that's what caused that? That's what could cause that, yes. Mm -hmm. Dirty, infect, you know, dirty um, equipment, not autoclaving your equipment, so not storing they it properly. Something like that. They'd have to go to their physician or the ER and get antibiotics. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of course, I have my own opinions of this piercing and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have very good body art regulations here. That's uh, ben Wood and, and, and my board did a fabulous yep. job working with all the body art practitioners and owners, you know, meeting of the minds. They're the experts in the field, so they brought what they knew to the table. And then you have the Board of Health who are, who's made up of, you know, physicians, et cetera, coming together and writing a great set of regulations. <coughs> you know. You've seen the individual you in the summer. You've probably seen them. What all the safety pins? Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. <coughs> I can't believe it. That must be wickedly painful. saw the, uh, the smoking thing on here. Uh, I was talking with my uh, son <coughs> the other day we were in the Florence Diner. Used to be when you went in the Florence Diner at every stool there was an ashtray oh, yeah. on the counter. Every table had an ashtray. And now I can't imagine it. I just can't imagine it. Don't tell me that to me Saturday night. And Phil Sullivan would be in the Florence Diner with a cigar. Yes, sir. Started. So every single morning, my job is to read the news. I read the Globe, I read the local Gazette, and every single morning, out of those two newspapers, I can find 10 to 15 articles that pertain to public health. Here are some of the articles that I found over the weekend. 
Greenwich student brings live bat to school. We're talking about rabies there. We're talking about bed bugs. Here's one who's local, Chanterelle go, uh, to go food cart brings organic meal snacks to Northampton streets. Um, school notified in a food recall. Health risk connected uh, connection found between steak and energy drinks. They're saying that there's this one protein source that are in both that is now instituting or promulgating <coughs> health issues. So every single morning, I read these headlines and think, wow, this is a huge umbrella of public health, and honestly, the majority of the people don't understand, uh, understand the magnitude of it. Sh that, yep, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Do they, they have a permit? Yep, they have a food permit from us, a mobile food permit. So they have a local food permit. Do they have a permit to operate their cart on the city street? This is a whole other discussion, and we can take this up after if you'd like. Okay, because that, mm -hmm. I was inundated. Yep, I was too. With calls. <laughs> Me too. Okay. So, nine-month medical marijuana moratorium, and here are some more other, you know, more headlines that I saw in the news this morning. So, needless to say, it's a giant umbrella. So, the scope of services that the Board of Health provide are vast and forever changing due to changes in the environment, acts of terrorism, shifts in behavior, and science and technology. In 1900, the, uh, the average life expectancy of a white male was 47 years old. In 2000, the average life expectancy of a white male was 77 years old. So in this 100 years of time, we have gained, on average, about 30 years of life, okay? 25 of those years were due to public health and sanitation. The other five years gained were through medicine and health care. Today, um, today, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what the Northampton Health Department does, the services that we provide, and the direction that we'd like to go in. In 1859, um, the Sanitation Commissioner called for the establishment of local boards of health in every community in Massachusetts, which are separate from city government. Government. They have autonomy from city government. Currently in Massachusetts, there are 351 local boards of health, and every single one of these local boards of health have home rule, meaning they get to make up their own policies and regulations. Okay? They can be different from surrounding towns and communities. The Board of Health is, a regulating, is the regulating authority with their primary focus on setting policy and making regulations that will protect, preserve, and improve the health of the community. Recently, there was a charter change in Northampton, and the Northampton Board of Health went from a three-member board to a five-member board. And the current board is, is made up of, we have two physicians on the board, and both have backgrounds in infection control. We have um, another member works for the State Department of Public Health. I have a retired OSHA worker, compliance officer on the board, and I have a UMass professor on the board. So I have a very device, a diverse board that bring a lot to the table, which is great. I think we just approved counsel from one of the doctors. Yeah. Yep. Going on yep. The so also with the charter change, the public health director, which is currently myself, is responsible to the mayor. Prior to the charter change, I was just responsible, or the person in this position, to the Board of Health. And when I say responsible to, what I mean is I'm responsible for updating them on community health issues and giving them reports on departmental activities. So now the director does that to both the mayor and the Board of Health. So then underneath the health director, we have a very small department. I have a part-time clerical worker, her name is Heather McBride, McBride, excuse me, who is worth her weight in gold. All of my employees are. We're small, but we're efficient and we're effective. I have a full-time inspector, Daniel Wojcik. I have a part-time inspector, Ed Smith. And then I have a part-time public health nurse, Jennifer Brown. Our part-time inspector and our part-time nurse is a shared position with Amherst. So we share those two positions right Your there. part-time inspector? Yep. Yep, in the is, public. It, is it 20 hours each? Yep, 20 hours in each community. Okay, so they're actually they're full time employees. They're full time employees, okay. yep, yep. So is, we that's, a, that's a regional agreement or? Just an agreement just between, between the two, us. Yep, the two communities. Okay. Yep, okay. yep. So, um, so that is the department's structure. 
My budget for fiscal year 2013, my total overall budget was $181,000. $170,000 went to staff and $11,000 was for operating and maintenance. Hmm. And I say that because it's important as I go through and show you the services that we provide and the direction that we're going and what we want to be able to provide to our community and what they deserve, what limited resources we have. We need to bolster through this department <laughs> as people get a more of an understanding what it is the health department does and public health is. So by state mandate, the, the Board of Health has two core functions. One is surveillance and reporting and control of communicable disease. And the second is enforcement of the, Depart the State Department of Public Health State T Sanitary Code and the Department, excuse me, Department of Environmental, DEP, their Title V and solid waste regulations. So those are our two core functions, communicable disease and state sanitary code and DEP codes. So what does this mean historically for day-to-day -day kind of functions? It means monitoring communicable disease through state structure and doing case management when applicable, and also doing uh, comprehensive inspections, so having uh, a comprehensive inspection service component in the department responsible for housing, you know, uh, addressing housing complaints, nuisance complaints, issuing permits, doing restaurant inspections. That's our kind, that's our day to day currently. Question. Mary. Yes. I'm hearing at a budget of 181,000, mm -hmm. 170,000 is towards staff, mm -hmm. and you have an operating maintenance budget of $11,000. Yes. yes. I have a problem with this. It's How tough. How can you go further? It's tough. How can you go further? It seems like you're just staying at the same elevation mm -hmm. every day. Year. And we hear this, mm -hmm. that they need more money to do what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. that's, that a, that's the $2,000 question, or $2 million question, whatever you, however you want to put it. And I think that's part of the reason why they chose me for this position, because I was the director also in Pittsfield prior to, and I grew that department by three employees in the course of a year. So it's being able to provide this information to you, the counselors, the public, this is what public health is, and this is why you have to support it and be able to defend that to the administration and the powers at B. So and I think how that's many, very important. How many staff in Pittsville? 14. 14. And I, I share your frustration mm -hmm. in the money. Mm -hmm. And that is why I am always adamantly opposed to all of this grant money. This is a discussion that has to happen at the state level and the federal level. Mm -hmm. We are broke. Mm -hmm. We've lost $4 million since 2002 in state aid. And all of our expenses have gone up. Yeah. Our federal allotment in our budget used to be 1.7%. It is now, since 2002, it is now down to 0.3%. Wow. But the grants continue to flow. And my opposition to all of that, to help out the Board of Health mm -hmm. and the school and the DPW for the roads is to eliminate all of this these grants right now. Mm -hmm. We don't give us the money as unrestricted aid. We know where we need to use this money. <coughs> we don't need to have we on the council, we approve at least one grant at every single meeting. It's a grant for um, a sidewalk or it's a grant for a technology improvement or it's a grant mm -hmm. for uh, a fuel efficient car, to, but we have to use it for that specific. Right. So my quest here with Stan Rosenberg and Jim McGovern and Richie Neal and the whole bunch is stem this grant money. Mm -hmm. I mean all of it, the federal and the state, and give this money to local the municipalities as unrestricted aid. Mm -hmm. Forget to get, we can figure out where we need to use this money. Right. So that's my problem with all the grants. And the grant money that we get through the, that the, the state doles out is about two and a half billion dollars a year. Wow. And that, now we're gonna, there's a grant now, and I hate to bring this up at this point, but this is what, this is what happens. This is why you don't get money. She needs to move on. I know, she has to move on. We're gonna accept another grant 
for an extension to the rail trail mm -hmm. from Leeds, not even to the Williamsburg line. It's nothing. It's out in the woods. But it's going to be a grant of $198,000. Right, right. But I mean, this stuff is somewhere, yeah. the formula has to change, and you need to be funded. Mm -hmm. You could use two hundred and fifty or $300,000 like nothing in your department. It, it is difficult, and I, I see what you're saying. It can be a double-edged sword, and I, I do understand that. I guess the good thing that we can say right now is that it is, you know, grant money is helping to subsidize some programs and some mm -hmm. some issues that need to be met. But yep. you're right; it is. It could be, it could be restructured differently. But those, you know, those are things that need to be lobbied for at, you know, a different level. You know, Absolutely. Here. And um, <laughs> as long as they continue to do it the way they're doing it, we're still going to be behind the eight ball. Every year, override this mm -hmm. one. Anyway, I'll yeah, stop. It's frustrating. Yeah, because she's got something in yeah. <laughs> So, um, gosh. So, anyways, up here is, is a slide for calendar year 2012, kind of give you an outline of the inspectional services and the permits that we issued in the health department. So, on a total, we did 1,172 inspections, and those run through the gamut from everything food service to pools, Title V work, schools, hotel, motel, TNA, you name it. That's all listed under the inspections for calendar year 2012, and we issued 636 permits that year also. 1,172 inspections. One and a half time inspectors, yep. So, um, so anyways, um, where was I? I'm sorry, I lost my place here. So I broke it down so you can see a picture of what the health department does. Um, health department that provides these services, which were outlined in the slide previously, were, is considered a regulatory model of public health. That's very important. So providing those services and meeting our mandates, which I told you about, we have two core functions, which are our mandates that have to be met, is considered, a health department that does that, a regulatory model of public health. However, with new threats emerging and a shift in what kills people, moving from infectious disease to behavior-related deaths, status quo is no longer good enough. It is absolutely no longer good enough. So the Board of Health hired me in September of 2012, and during my interview I spoke to them how I saw the future health department for the city of Northampton and the services that should be provided to the community members of Northampton. And because of that, I really feel they saw my vision and we were all in alignment and that's why I got the position. It's my goal over the next two years to have the infrastructure and the health department built up enough to be able to provide the services the community deserves and needs. The 10 essential services that encompass public health, well right here is a, a nice graph on how we died, you know, the most common reasons people died in you know, the 1900s and now how people are dying in, in 2007. I'm sorry, the pixels uh, aren't quite as clear as I thought they would on the big screen, but I'll give you a handout. So it went from pneumonia and tuberculosis to being the leading causes of death in the 1900s to heart disease and cancer in 2000. So mm -hmm. those are behavior-related changes that are causing death nowadays. All right, so in the 1900s, pneumonia number one mm -hmm. and tuberculosis mm -hmm. number two. Now, in 2007 and up, right, mm -hmm. it's heart disease and cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the top three uh, in those years, too, that was, that was before penicillin. Correct. Yeah. Well, antibiotics. early 1900s. Mm -hmm. What's that? Early 1900s. Yeah, yeah. antibiotics has taken, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's turned it right around. You're right. But again, you know, we're still talking about behavior-related deaths being the number one cause, yeah. and those aren't even making our top yeah. ten list, so mm. yeah. that's very important to keep that in mind. So these are the ten core functions that I see that the community deserves to have provided from the health department. Um, I'm just going to go over them really quickly. So first let me give you the de definition of how I see public health. It's the art and science of protecting and inspiring the health of a community through education, 
promotion of healthy lifestyle, lifestyles, and research for disease and injury prevention. That is a definition that I come up with when I think about public health. And these are the services, the 10 essential services that I think should be provided. Monitor is monitor health status to identify community health problems. We do that in the health department through epidemiology, looking at risk factor data. We use the State Department's uh, software program. Um, so we do a lot of monitor, monitor, monitoring. Diagnose and investigate health problems and health hazards in the community. Okay, Northampton is not immune. We have high child, children, childhood obesity rates. We have high type two diabetes rates. Um, high asthma rates. North you mean with children? We, yes. yes, we have type diabetes. 2 diabetes. Ten years ago, type 2 diabetes in children was unheard of. I know. And now we have type 2 diabetes yep. in but school what's children. What's the reasons and for that? Because of eating the wrong stuff? Not yes. just a little bit either. It's, 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 it's yes, they put it's themselves scary. in a category where their BMI is over 30%. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Yep. That's me. But I'm 58 years old. <laughs> Inform, educate, and empower people about health issues. So we, you know, we're going to collaborate with personal health care providers. We're going to do community outreach. We want to mobilize our community partnerships to identify and solve health problems. We do that currently. My predecessor, Ben Wood, has really laid a nice foundation for me to walk into and carry out this vision. We have great partners in Spiffy, Mass in Motion, um, coalitions, I, we have multiple coalitions that we've already partnered up with, so there's a nice foundation already there. Develop policies and plans that support individual and community health. Tobacco regulations, we're updating those. We've got wellness programs in the works, and we're doing a lot there. What are you going to do about smoking marijuana? That's a whole other two hours. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> we've, been, we've, we've been involved in that. One. I have a question. Do you do any uh, outreach, in, like at the high schools and things like that? You go to the high school and the middle schools and talk about this stuff. I'm not sure where the health department has done what they've done in the past, but we do intend on doing stuff in the future. But the schools really have a wonderful. Um, uh, I don't know what her exact position is. Karen Jarvis Vance yes. does a lot, a awesome. lot of education yep. with the parents and the students. So I mean I, I mean we'll collaborate and we'll work. Well on that's things. what I mean. I, yeah. I don't expect you to go into the yes. schools and start mm -hmm. giving them mm -hmm. some speeches, but you do collaborate with yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Karen Jarvis Karen Jarvis yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Marissa. 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 Marissa 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 awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, we work with her too. So enforce laws and regulations that protect health and ensure safety. Well, that's what we do by mandate, so that, of course, is going to be included in our 10, core fun or, or, our 10 essential services. Link people when needed to personal health services and ensure the provision of health care when otherwise unavailable. We're starting to do that. We, we did, uh, let me see, I'm sorry, 19 flu clinics. We went to the people who are uninsured or underinsured or can't get to the clinics or to get their vaccine. We went out to the people. We want to be able to do that more with different kinds of immunizations. Oh, that's okay? Great. Excellent. Um, assure competent public health and personal health care workforce. Educating, training my staff, making sure they have professional licenses. That's very, very important to me. And I will invest my whole $11,000 of my operating budget there if I have to because you need a competent staff and people need to be able to trust what we're doing. So that is on my list of things to do. And then we have Evaluate, speaks for itself, research, right and be at the center of that whole 10 essential service diagram. So again, like I said, we've got a nice foundation that was laid. I've been here since in, for about six months now, continuing to build on that. And within two years, I want a fully servicing health department that's able to provide these 10 essential services on every different level. I hope you don't plan on leaving after two years. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, I don't. And I see you're a registered sanitarian. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which we have been lacking. Yeah. Uh, prior. Okay. To you. All right. I, didn't I don't know. think we had a registered sanitarian except we used to borrow one from Amherst. That's for the septic system. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Title five. So you're going to do that plan. here in Northampton? Yep. I do all that. Yep. So that's oh, what yeah. you do. Thank I you. Bet. Mm -hmm. So we're going to we're saving money. Well, well, you used to contract out. You used to use contractual so. services yep. with different communities so they could review plans 
witness, do perk tests, do soil evaluations, but now I have the licensing and I also want to make sure that my staff has the licensing and we're also going to be growing yep. Excellent. that too, what we do there. I'm a light, I'm an installer, so. You are? Oh yeah, I have been for mm -hmm. 35 years. Great. And, um, so I might be calling on you for some of your expertise. <laughs> Three uh, years. <laughs> so, to that's, give you. That, that, that's a no no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Just knowledge. No, no, knowledge. a joke. Mm -hmm. So, to make this applicable, what I've done was something that I'm working on right now, which I've told Marianne about, is I'm taking something that I'm doing and I'm going to apply it to these 10 essential services. So, last year in 2012, We, if you read the news, listened to the radio, I'm sure you heard of it, we had West Nile virus and triple E, Eastern equine encephalitis scares, all within our community. Normally, people think of these arboviruses, these mosquito-borne diseases, as a central mass and an eastern mass problem. People don't think that those uh, mosquitoes, you know, don't cross boundaries. But they do. They're here. Okay? There is a presence. And last year proved that. So because I am who I am, I needed more information. I said, well, geez, what are we going to see in the upcoming years? You know, this is what we saw this year. So I started gathering data. With Triple E, and Triple E is deadly. There's a 45% mortality rate with Triple E. Okay, so every 45 people out of 100 are going to die. And those who don't are usually left with lifelong neurological damage. So this is a very serious disease. That's caused by a mosquito. A mosquito. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the data, and I wanted to see if there was any kind of historical trends, and I certainly found one. Now, there's no rhyme or reason when we, see, when we have an epidemic, but what I did see is when there is an increase in cases one year, the following two years follow right behind it. So last year was our spike. Mm -hmm. Now, for the next two years, we're, we're prob now history proves itself, which it usually does, we're going to have an increase in prevalence for the next two years which is very concerning to me. So again, now going back to, let me just bring this back, our 10 essential services. This is not something, you know, a, a, um, a regulating health department would look at, you know? However, we want to be able to provide the bigger picture and the necessary services to our community. So, so I did monitoring. That's monitoring. So that's where mm -hmm. the inform and the educate and mm -hmm. the empower mm -hmm. comes from. Absolutely. Which I told you to get a hold of our council president, come to city council for a presentation. Because mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Okay. Yeah. So diagnose and investigate. I've done that. We're looking at elevated triple E and West Nile virus for the upcoming years. Okay, so that's diagnosed. Inform, educate, and empower. Now what I've done, now mind you, limited resources, limited staff, I've put in for um, an intern from BU, which I was approved through BPH. I put in for a mini grant, $1,000, just to get some equipment that I need, and I'm putting together a program to do monitoring and surveillance. If everything goes through, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting traps out for mosquitoes, collecting, and sending them off to the State Department for testing. How do we know what to do for mosquito control in the future if we don't know what the heck we have here? And the state, because of their lack of resources, doesn't do any testing here in Western Mass anymore. They only trap and collect and test in Central Mass and in Eastern Mass. Last year, they they collected nine pools of mosquitoes from Hampshire County in its entirety. And out of those nine pools, only 50 mosquitoes were tested. Now, in Central Mass, in the average community of our size, they collected 35,000 mosquitoes and tested. So look at the difference. So we don't know what we have here, so we don't know how to protect our residents in the future. Okay. So because of that, until I can get the data to support what our needs are, I need to educate and empower our community members on what they need to do to protect themselves. So we're putting together brochures 
how to protect yourself best from arbovirus, and we're also including tick-borne disease in this brochure pamphlet because there's a rise in that also. So we figure we'll do a one-shot arbovirus, protect yourself. <laughs> how to protect your property, how to protect your pets, how to protect your loved ones. We're going to hopefully be doing some kind of forum where property owners can come to us and ask all these questions what they need to do. We're thinking about doing a tire collection day so people can come and bring in old tires, any old tires that they have because water gets in there, that's a, that is just one of the most, uh, I don't even know what the word is, I'm looking, mosquitoes like to breathe there. Um, that's a habitat, a breeding habitat. Um, so there's a lot that we're doing, but we want to inform the public through media, social media, brochures, we want to get in their face about this so they can empower themselves to protect themselves and their families. So that goes under that. Mobilize our community partners. We'll be working with the State Department of Public Health so they can do our testing at no cost or very low cost. We're going to be working with um, DPW, Mosquito Control Projects. We want to bring in as many partners as we can to this. Then develop policies. At the end of this, I want to be able to have a written document called a City of Northampton Comprehensive Mosquito Control Plan. Whatever that entails, right now we don't know because we don't have data to support it. But that would be the end result. It would be some kind of policy, city policy or regulation. Enforce laws and regulations. Underneath that, we will, as the health department, we will be looking for nuisances that we can, you know, enforce a state sanitary code or, or Chapter 111, meaning pools with stagnant water, people that just let it go at the end of the season. You know, it's, it's August, nights are cold, they're not using their pool, so they don't want to waste electricity and run it or the chemicals, so they just let it sit until they cover it after the holiday in September. Yeah. We can't have that, not with Tripoli e and West Nile around because that's going to become a breeding habitat for mosquitoes. So we're going to be enforcing the laws that we can that fall under our umbrella. And then, I know I'm talking very fast, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, we want to assure competent health professional, obviously, will have the license, get trained. We want to link people up. When we use link in this, I want to look at the populations that are more or most susceptible to these diseases and make sure that we're targeting them, okay, and getting them the information and the, and, the, and the care that they need. So that's kind of making this model that I gave you applicable to something that I'm doing right now. Okay, that's why I wanted to go over that. There's a lot I can tell you about mosquito control and what's going on and, and show you data, but that'll be for another time. I just wanted to give you a brief overview. I would like to um, do that in September probably. In September? If we're going to do it, we should do it before September. I do. Before September. I don't have before an opening. Those, yeah. What's that? I don't have an opening. Mm. I did go in front of the Public uh, Safety Committee with a full presentation. Okay. okay. Are you going to come to City Council and do a presentation? Possibly, yes. I hope so. It's because okay. We'll see to it. Because <laughs> I'm really talking with her counselor yes, about, it, about coming here because I think it's very valuable. You are on TV. Mm -hmm and people are watching our city mm -hmm. council meetings now very closely. Mm -hmm. And I think them knowing about this, because this is frightful. Mm -hmm. I would be a little careful on the tires. Right, okay. Well, they're expensive to dispose of. <laughs> if you're going to have a collection, a collection for tires, mm -hmm. We're, we're seeing if it can happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a, you know, I, I can think of a million, a million people out of the 29,000 that live here that will be bringing They'll be bringing in their tires. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of how we can. Six bucks. That is costly. Yeah. But, so I am working with Karen, uh, Karen McClellan on that. So to conclude, you know, I'd like to recite a quote from... Sir Jeffrey Vickers, it's one of my favorite quotes when it comes to public health, and it says, I believe that the history of public health might well be written as a record of successive redefinings of the unacceptable. And I hope that kind of sums up everything that I gave, I gave to you today, what the public health regulatory model is and where we're going and how things have changed over time. The 1900s, people dying of infectious disease, yep. today's, you know, behavior related disease. I really think he does a nice, you know, nice job summarizing that. And again, it's one of my favorite quotes. So with that, 
I just want to thank you for you know allowing me to come here today and thank you and and give this presentation. So. I'm really hoping you come to City Council. You know, yep. because you talked about the ticks in animals, mm -hmm. and it's funny because I was at my bed with our dog, our chocolate lab got diagnosed with Lyme. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, the beginning of it. So my son's vet is treating it with an antibiotic. And I panicked because of my miniature collie. So I brought her to see my vet up by the log cabin. Yep. So she got tested Lyme. Oh. Even with using what you're supposed to use on them, mm -hmm. she said she has so many cases coming in with dogs and cats. Yeah, it's on, know? it's on So right. I just bought mm -hmm. the stuff that's from Germany now. Mm -hmm. And the thunder was outside yesterday. The chocolate lab came in, he had one right on his ear. Mm -hmm. It, she it said, is a season already, believe it or not. As you see them. And I, I have a feeling that, you know, um, this is going to become one of those unfunded mandates from the State Department coming down to, you know, the local yeah. health department sooner than later. I mean, yeah. that's how much of a surge that we're used to those. Like I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite phrases. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have I, any other questions for yeah. me? Or? The only thing I have, Meredith, I, I can't squeeze you in. I'm booked. And the only time I could get you in would be September. I'm booked right up until December. For? You know, to come in and, and do an update maybe on, on what you gave today. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, how yep. we're doing with yep. the educational part of it that yep. you're planning on doing. Yeah. We're really interested a lot, too, in the problems that you encounter in doing your job. We know the money is one. Mm -hmm. That's the biggie. You know, if anything, you know, if there's any stumbling blocks in the city that we might be able to do or help you out with, um, we'd be happy to do it. We just, that's our big concern is problems that you encounter in the performance of your job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I would like to see her getting some more money somehow because if they stay at the same level every year, she is not going to be able to keep going further and further and further to do what she wants to do. I, you know, and, and to be fair, you know, um, I always like to come in and do one full cycle. You know, see what the problems are, do an assessment of the community, do an assessment of the department before I start kind of yeah. picking out things that we need and whether it's money, equipment. Yeah. I like a full year under my belt before I start, you know, promoting and advocating for those kind of things. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't think it's fair. Right. How long have you been with her? Since, Since September. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, when I was doing the budget, I that's just... Uh, <laughs> glaring at you, yep. you know, but um, I'm very intuitive and creative and I can do a lot on a little, okay. which is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for everything mm -hmm. coming in. Thank you. Mary. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. We will be in touch. All right. <laughs> you got my number. <laughs> and I'll call you about making that site visit with me. Okay. Okay. 1214? Hey. Yep, I see it. <laughs> the ordinance is late tonight. <laughs> I know it. Oh no, know what happened? I think something about, weren't we told that city council there was two meetings that would not be operating yes. due to a malfunction? Yes, Remember? right. In, in the computer. Exactly. Okay. okay, what I'm going to talk about is, and thank you, Meredith, again, thank really you. appreciate you coming, um, about our meeting coming up. In May, we have the following coming in, which is Mary Ann Winters. She's the executive De director of Safe Passage. Laura Penny is a leading their new prevention initiative, and Laura is eager to tell us all about it. This is the first time in social services and veterans affairs that we are having Safe Passage coming in. So we should be honored with that. Yep. And also, we have um, Lynn Wallace, who's chair of the Housing Partnership, City of Northampton. Audrey Esther, vice chair of the Housing Partnership, City of Northampton, coming in. Okay, so we have two committees coming in. So that's it.
Can you do? don't have any public comment. Can March's minutes. What's that? March's minutes. Oh, yeah. When approved the minutes. Yeah. Are they on the, the agenda? Minutes of April. Approval of the minutes of March 18th. Move to approve. Second. Aye. 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 There you go. Thank you, Ruth. That's about it. New business. Any new business? Nope. Move to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> hey, uh, Meredith, so, uh, okay, you're turning the camera off now.